You know, when we're doing our story concepts, when we're creating stories through our images and creating these compositions like we've been talking about, there's so many different elements, right? There's so many things to keep in your mind. Oh, you know about the thirds rule or, you know, uh, uh, having lines that lead into other lines and create focus. And it's just a lot to try and keep in your mind. So um, let's bring it down to what's the most important thing, which is focal point. So in session six here, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can really focus in the audience's attention into what matters the most. Now in animation, we use we use a lot of different elements that we have at our exposure like movement and timing and things like that. But when we're talking about an illustration, one impactful image that needs to tell a story just like that, you really want your audience to focus in on target in on what that most important element is that's, that they're really going to be able to get your storytelling the most from that's going to have the most impact for your idea. So that's focal point. So we're going to talk about how to choreograph your viewers eyes to uh, see what they what you want them to see. And here's some some tricks, some tools that you can use in creating a, a stronger focal point in your storytelling piece. Focal point is key, right? It's like a target. This is the thing that we want our audience to beat into, that, that they're gonna telescope into and they're gonna put their focus into because it's, it's the main part of the story. We're doing a story concept, a drawing. There could be a lot of activity and things going on. We want them to focus in on the things that we think are the most important for them to see. So focal point is a really key lesson to learn. Let's get into it, okay? So for focal point, uh, the first thing I want to say is that storytelling is essential to focus the viewer's eye to the main story point. This is the focal point of the drawing. Where's the focal point in this quick little um, pin sketch that I did? Where would you guys say that focal point is? Well, it should be right there. And what's nice about this, see how I've created a shape here with the design of the cat and the arching of the back, the frame. It really showcases our main character and brings our eye, even the hair and the shading on the hair brings us into this area. There's a tension here of his mouth and the cup. That's where I wanna put your focus. So that's where I want you to see mostly. There's other lines that are leading us towards that, the collar and the harness here, the shoulder line, lots of things like that. So um, that's our focal point there, good. Now, the next thing, some more examples. These are all little illustrations I've done over the years. I had a client that wanted me to create this bull character, and so I created a bunch of different things. What are some of the focal points that you see? Where does your eye go to first, and why? Usually our eye goes to the points of contrast in, in values or in colors, and for us, that are that's mostly in these areas. There's a large area of light against dark here. Same thing with here, so our eye goes here. Same thing with the hoof and this stuff. These are all where I want you to look anyway. These are really key areas, okay? The expression or something like that. So that's, that's what I designed these to be when I was thinking about my color and values, which we'll get into in just a minute. All right, so here's the larger question. Here's the larger question is this, why is this and how do you design your drawing with focal point in mind? How do we lead our audience to do this? Well, there's some tricks. There's some tricks and tips I'm gonna give you guys now. And that has to do with directional lines and contrast and values. There's other elements too, some of which we've already talked about like um, you know, uh, uh, linear perspective and things like that, depth cues, things like that can help in the focal point. But let's talk about directional lines. Here we go. So here's uh, three examples that have directional lines in them designed by me to make sure that your eye travels through the frame in an interesting way to the focal point, the thing that I want you to concentrate on. Um, sometimes directional lines can be very straight, like these spears pointing or very rhythmic and curved. We got these like plant areas and stuff that are bringing us up and into the ferry. Look at all the directional elements in this design that bring us into the ferry. 
Look at the real stabbing, you know, sharp graphic lines of the spears here. The one thrusting finger to Moses here where God is telling him to go. <laughs> um, and we're really showcasing his expression here too. So this is a nice tension point in that design. So um, directional lines can really help with our focal point and getting us there, right? How about this one? Uh, this is a sketch. Uh, I just did this in Procreate the other day. Um, very rough, but I put a frame around it, made it into an illustration here of a little mermouse. I might paint this someday, do it in color. And then catfish, literal catfish. And a mermouse here, I thought it was kind of cute. I'm playing with scale. Look at how small he is with these huge fish. But also look at how they're kind of coming into him from different angles. Look what's happening here. Boom. Those directional elements are all shooting us into look, look, look. And then when I do the, you can see in the blue, the light blue, I'm going to put a kind of a nice tone around him where he's in a pool of light and they're off. This goes off in a shadow around here. So I have some ideas of that'll push that focal point when I get into values. Pretty cool stuff. Huh? I love this. I love this kind of stuff. To me, this is where we as designers can really utilize our talents and abilities, our skill set. But let's talk about contrast and values. This is another element, another tool besides directional lines that can really cue in our audience to look in the illustration, look in the picture where we want them to see, okay? What we want them to see first. So here's something about values that you may or may not know. But our eye will always go to the area of most contrast of value. It's just how we operate as humans. We look towards bright spots and dark spots. Boom. That's where our eye goes to. We're attracted to that. We're attracted to high contrast. So high contrast is like this top one here where it's like black against white. That's the most stark amount of contrast you can have. A lower contrast is, you know, maybe for background elements, things that we don't want, want our audience to, to signal in on too much. They're closer in value and tone, okay? And which does your eye go to first? Well, obviously it's gonna be here, right? You can't help it. Just close your eyes and then open it. Open your eyes real quick. Oh, it goes right to the black and white, right? I know I'm right. Do it again, close your eyes, open your eyes. What do you see first? The left or the right? You look at the left side, right? Because there's more value here in between this square and this square than this square and this square. So the left side is what attracts our attention and it pulls us in to focus. That's our focal point. What are the focal points here? Look at this. Do you guess? Are you looking? So this is a look at the top one. The first one is a photograph. Look how that really bright spot down here leads our eye. Oh, look at all the uh, linear perspective too. All these depth cues that we have here. We have a nice area that's kind of flat here in the foreground but our eye travels down following these lines of the buildings and the doors, and it goes boom, right to this bright area, which is almost in the thirds too. A really nice uh, design there in this photograph. Here's a great little rough sketch for a painting by a famous painter. Look at all the directional lines that are leading us in, but our eye goes right here, and especially to this guy here, who's like completely light against the darkness within this um, fireplace and our eye goes straight to him, and it le leads in through these lines here to him. I love that. Bill Pete was a master storyboard artist at Disney. This is a children's book illustration he did. He's done a lot of children's books over the year. Here's a Bill Pete illustration that's all in tones, and we can see how our first read is this dark little wombat or whatever this creature is against lightness here, particularly in here. Um, and then the second read is this area here. You can see he didn't go quite white with the background. He actually put a little value in here, a little gray tone, because he didn't want them to pop as much. So, um, so really we get the darker tones over here and then our eye goes over here. And keeping those eyes really big and white really uh, adds to the expression and the fright in their eyes, right? He's, he's eating their food. That's a lot of great storytelling and great focal point work there by Bill Pete. Love it. Okay guys, so uh, you saw this before, but here's my illustration. 
It's a kind of a hodgepodge of Kronk from Emperor's New Groove with the characters from Up. I did this a while back and I inked it. Um, and uh, Kronk says, he said, squeak, 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 and squeaker, which means, would you like a nut? Would you like a nut? All right, yeah, I play with the voice a little bit. Here's one of my own examples. Uh, let's add values to this to clarify the focal point because like right now, all these lines, they're blending into each other. Um, our eye goes to the darker big eyebrows of him. Our eye probably goes to these dark blacks and in, in, in the glasses of this little guy here, right? Um, but we really want this to be our focal point, the acorn. That should be, that's what I designed this to be. I wanted everything to kind of work into that. There's a lot of directional lines that lead to the acorn. That's real helpful. But this desperately needs some kind of tones and shadows to really help us to get contrast of light and shadow to really make this pop, right? So let's do that. Ooh, that's not it. It is right there. Boom. You see that? I actually had the acorn almost radiate some light. So there's some light splashing on their faces, almost like the acorn is radiating or powerful or, you know, like a magical almost, right? Let's go back again. Boom, right there. So what did I do? You can see I put some real dark tones around the acorn, around him. Um, I've, we've got this area here that's lighter, the branch. I've really knocked back this background. All this foliage back here to show that they're in the jungle or wherever they are, I've really knocked that back so that they pop too. Now you're really getting some nice thrust in the directional lines of, of her arcing back into pushing him forward and his arms all the way to the acorn. You feel that, you feel this. Let's see some of those directional lines and cues that are amplified now by our by our uh, uh, tones. Here we go. Look at that. Boom. Look at the directional lines that are amplified here now. There's some coming off of the leaves here. You know, I didn't even accentuate this one, but that from the branch, you got lines this way, that way, coming off his back and around this cupped ear that he has here that points us down. This line that points us down off his shoulder. Some real nice directional lines. I was really proud of this one. I liked how it came out. I still think I could push this. Uh, I'd probably take away, I might dole down a little bit of their faces and stuff. I think I'm pulling them too much focus. I really want this to be brighter. Um, so what I might do is go even darker with some of the shading here, maybe darker um, on the branch too might help to pop that acorn a little bit more so that it becomes a real focal point. But I'm pretty happy with how this came out. When I go to color with this, which is probably where I would go next, then I may amplify that a little bit more. All right, that's contrast in values. Okay, so here we are at assignment number six. I want you guys to create an image with a strong focal point. So there's our frame again. I want you to create um, a composition of some kind that has a strong focal point. So think about directional lines and shapes and how you can compose that to really point towards, without being exact and you know um, too obvious, try and work that into your layout so that those directional lines can pull our eye into where you want us to look in the frame. I'd love for you to do some tones and shadows too, put some values in there. So think about contrast is, is the thing we, we're gonna look at, is it light against dark? Is it dark against light? Think about that when you make your assignment number six. All right guys, see you soon.